Hello, I'm I'm adjusting my chair. I should have started recording. After that, I'm uh, my name is John Proxy. It's not my real name, obviously. Uh, that'd be a silly real name. Uh, I'm having a Disco Elysium adventure. I'm about to end a Disco Elysium adventure, I feel like. But what specifically? We're talking to the deserter who done a murder. He did a murder and uh, found out. Uh, I want to know what specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Then fucking, he looks at the charred wood. I didn't like that. You were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself, drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. For him to stop reacting to stimuli, to be broken off from the world, cordoned off into darkness. Uh, I've been doing these because why not? Let's put my logic up one more time. I wanted to see. I wanted her to see his head explode. He nods. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. He squints. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But he shrugs. You can't have everything. The man has seen the pa past her, like you did. Now he longs to see her covered in blood. Punish her. All these purples ganging up. How long have you been watching her? Since she came to Martin Ace, I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the Feld building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just the spot of the night moving. Past the Feld building on the coast, what was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a, a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she hid there? A passport? Tickets to Villiers? He coughed. From there to Cachebron. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. This is the hidden buoy she was told us about. We looked into it. She nods after she was gone. Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No, why would I do that? didn't need the tickets to Villiers. Put them back. If she wanted to extort someone, I, I'd, if I wanted to extort someone, I, I'd do better. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name was Clage, or do not have seen it in the documents. You saw her name in the passport, but before when I said her name was Clage, you didn't seem to recognise it. He didn't say Clage in there. He shakes his head. to say her name was in the passport. It was something, he stutters, I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I don't remember her face on the photo. Are you sure when we checked, there was nothing there? He looks to the reeds, confused. Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to Villiers. Strange confusion comes over him from time to time. Some kind of aberration on the nervous system. Moving on, did you continue watching her after this? I did. He almost smiles. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over, black and yellow. I could see she'd taken a beating. I could see who she was too. Spook on the run. Revachol, a cloaca of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers ends up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. I could tell she was a spook from the documents. She had different colour hair on the photo and glasses forged. Some sordid bourgeoisie affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. Bruises. You can't make that out on the scope. And you can see her bruises through the scope of a rifle. You can't see bruises through a scope, it's just a blur. He shakes his silver head. Grey head. How do you know... Oh yeah, because of the people. How does he know the minute details about her body? It comes quickly to you. Bruises on her body. Any chance you've seen her through a hole in the wall? Oh yes, he smacks his lips. Cutting those drugs of hers with little lines with a knife, masturbating. You make that hole too. With a clip point knife. Ever see her through a window on a roof? Like that too, yes, he nods. Bending like a bow against the glass. You've see, been through the secret route behind the welling in rags. Those were your footprints there. You just changed your shoes and moved on. I've been through all the martinets, every nook and cranny. And that too. And that too. Shakes his head, almost in awe. The things they did in the little room, what she'd do to feel good, explains. Funny the way light works. 
You turn it on the inside, and it gets so dark out you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the 20s, when they were still ha hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but keep shaking his head. Those two took the keg. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. Quick glance at you. Then at the man. How did you get in there? The hidden pinball workshop. Uh, workshop. I could just walk in there now. After a good wash. I told you. They think I'm an antisocial. Closing hours is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen. How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeoisie game merchant lived there. I don't know. 15 years ago. Left spare keys all over. I took one. When I saw her... Uh, turn the light on one night in my scope and points towards the whirling in rags. They found a use for it, a spare key, like one hanging behind the union box union, uh, window. So you wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that man, he wouldn't believe the things she'd let him do to her. He shakes his head and stares at the ashes. You stare at them too, in your mind, her innocence die. Still turns in the, in the, to leave, airport bag in hand, silks following her in a wake. The dream. See you tomorrow, Harry. A voice rings in the evening, air burning. You saw through her. So did I. Well, that, not enough that I didn't arrest her, though. You're delusional. There's nothing to see in the soul of a bourgeoisie woman. It's the same as the surface. Sick hedonism and desperation. like that. I don't think like that. No one gives a shit what you think. The old man spits in the ash. You and your cronies kill ten working class men a day. I've heard the statistics on Channel 8. Got feelings for that woman? There's... He sighs. There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's not enough. Coals in his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping from water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else in this fight. It just helps if you have your eye on something there. He looks to the city. It's a weakness, I know. There have been others. Yes, over the years. It's not unproletarian to feel something. Was that why you left dried flowers behind a window? No. He starts to shake his head again. A sunflower on a withered stalk. Why then? I don't really know. It was there one night. She was crying like a child in the corner of her room. On the floor, like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I'd killed him. He bought her Maybells. Yes. He looks at the charred logs. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. I say nothing. Neither does he. He lowers his head like a sunflower on a wilted stalk. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes and nods at you once more. In conclusion, it wasn't about him, it was about her. Ah. Uh, he repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds, and a twitch in the corner of his eye. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. The old man looks at you, suddenly remembers something. Where is she? That Clagé. I haven't seen her there for days. She got away, but she led us here first. She figured out someone was watching her from the sea fort. Gone. Looks to the city and nods. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this, uh, this last week. The island, like she knew. He sighs. She'd look at night crying or smoking on the roof, staring right into me. He adds, to no one in particular. It doesn't matter. Midtown across the Bay of Revachol, the ocean wind washes 40-story sto towers above them. Busan Central Aerodrome, cocoon suspended in the sky by a web of suspension wiring circled by hybrid aircraft. North. On a platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates and alcohol, and she still smiles among the crowd. Among the great ghost of the city she's leaving, though never far south. Smaller, distant, hidden, not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the spring air below her. Streets and towers, tenements and water, and across it, a dark strip of ruins barely visible. She didn't squint her eyes. He knew she he knew she knows. He was looking at the island, figuring out day by day, cigarette by cigarette. We could get more, 
The lieutenant uses the opportunity to tell you in a loud voice. I've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. You can get more out of him. He likes talking. Enough. Take him in, bend his arms behind his back and end this. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? Tragic comedy, shakes for life, druggies, prostitutes and rentiers. Strange little engine seems to fire up in him. Again, straightens his back. The familiar put 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 of hatred. More specifically. Specifically the whole city is a charnel house, tripped clean and draped of neon, like Martinez. Shakes his head in grave disgust. Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is racist in Martinez. Their favourite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to the race themed radio shows in, in, ruin, in the ruins, in their lorries, points inland. Pumped full of steroids and Radio Revital 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by the Social Democratic Union, the farce of Social Democrat who runs it, Mr. Clare. Yes, the fly lava in his container. Let some nihilistic advertising yuppities erect statue of Philippe the Third, syllophytic murderer, on the town square to spit on the working class. Anything more? Not since the serfs of ancient Perkinesis' history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachol at least pretends to rebuild. His people still live in ruins. Intents, like animals, points to the church, like those boom boom morons on the ice. Pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. He was shaking his head with the sorrow of the sight he missed. That all. The worst of them is the blood-drenched Socreant on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading round in his uniform, throwing his balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on her graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in the ozone, or croyant Bahrain, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on the drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain. All just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frissel is now dead. Just not. We did good when we pushed him under the old horse car. If only, in the thirties, those disco whores. What follows his ominous mumbling. I cannot make out a single word. Disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's laughter centre, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue. Nihilistic advertising agency people. Might be worth investigating. Disco whores? Whores. All he really says. Even that word has to be pushed through his teeth. Great force. The rage seeps too hard. There was something about the statue on the roundabout and syphilis. Syphilis is a disease Philip the Third contracted in a whorehouse. He fires quickly. The statue is an abomination. Abomination? The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander the trillions on sparkling wine and cocaineum. Monument to himself. Son Philippe the Fourth, the insane contracted syphilis in the womb, weaves in a wheeze of hatred. And it's technically possible, though Philippe the Third was not actually syphilitic, he was just mad. And he still went on to govern Revachol for 25 years. He lost two million lives toppling that mode of government, and the grotesque statues too, hundreds of them. But it's still there. What a keen remark, he sputtered. Yes it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know why? Because cynical advertising yuppies erected a deconstructed version of it. That's right. Some advertising cockroaches erected a cynical deconstruction of it. We tore it down in the honest working class plastic explosives. And there it is again. He shakes his head in disgust. Art is the bourgeoisie establishment. It is an affront to humanity. Every gallery should be bulldozed. And the artist should be given 30 years of hard labour in Yucca Qatar. Wait, the bullet hole in Philippe's heart. The statue had been shot. That was him. It had to have been. It had already proven capable of taking a far more complicated shot than that. It was you. You shot the statue. There was a bullet hole in his heart. Yeah, I did. He nods. A needless sentimental gesture. Should have spared the bullet for the deformed monster of liberal capitalism. Shameful, really. Yes, shameful. Lieutenant takes a quick note. 
to how many others to punish over the years. Isn't that right, Detective? He turns to you. That's it for the statue, then. Tell me, Mr. Dross. Fat union man. Let them put it there. Corrupt it as he is. He probably got a fat check for it, too. Shared with the law. Hmm. Keeps having opinions about the union's leadership. You mentioned the union is social democratic. And Mr. Clare's a farce of a social democrat. Another hideous disappointment. Points at the ash. Unions are the real enemy. The true enemy of the proletariat. Placating the masses. Disappointment so personal. He displays a familiarity with the union's top brass. Who's a disappointment? Everard Clare. That deformed toad. I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean the brains of the operation. The smart one. Edgar. I mean Edgar, Everard's brother. The old man chortles with a nod. Talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin with the alienation this and homogeny that. Ah! He's a Marxist. Communism's complex. <laughs> but yeah, the thing that's interesting about leftism is like the, uh, it's not interesting. The thing that I'm making a note of right now. Sorry, it's, it's a vocal tick. Um, a thing of note is that with, when, with the left, like, the little minutia, uh, it splits them really heavily. It's like, uh, but yeah, anyway. Talk to Edgar. First against the wall with him. He stopped poking at the ash now, just shaking his head. Claire's wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without the know knowing. Of course, maybe the Claire's asked him to. Ah. Don't go straight for the kill. Exhaust everything else first. Soften them up. Have you approached them? I haven't approached anyone. I've hid. It was Edgar who came to me. How did he know you were here? You didn't just stumble in like an oaf. Uh, he didn't just... Yeah. He figured it out. Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you. He has brains. Once the path leading to the tower. Stepped right off the boat and walked down here where you came. Even kept the door open for him. Thought he was a man of the left. Wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. When was this? Twenty years ago. Neither of them could walk now, could they? They were less fat then. That's around the time the Clares came to, into power. What did you... What did you talk about? Edgar did the talking. Paid his respects, like I was a fossil in uniform. Offered platitudes about the struggle. Flaunted his pink degree. Even quoted Mazov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes Mazov. He suddenly remembers. Oh, and charity too. They love their charity. Offered me blankets and social housing. I still have the gas cooker he bought. He let you be here. He let me be here. He looks around. Z the Zok is an unlawful successor of the commune of Revachol. We took their fortification from the loyal list. Even the Clares understand this. He let him be here. Understanding was a courtesy. Why such a courtesy? Mr. Dross, did you kill the Krenel mercenary for the Clares to incite a riot? You know why I killed that fucker, Dright? He shakes his head. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Tried teaching him some Mazovian social economics. He didn't stick with parted ways. Okay, he didn't do the hangman for them. He's insinuating something. There's more here, you can feel it. He's not outright lying, but almost. Logic legendary. Put logic up, bloody hell. Legendary failure? Fuck off, what did I roll for that? Ah. Oh. oh no, the connection doesn't come to you on such a pivotal moment. Tap yourself in the head again. Stop. Just stump cut. <laughs> Wait, what was that about him meeting Edgar? In a deal? By God, we were on the edge. The very end, you can't even remember what you were trying to connect, can you? While the murder suspect shares it, you were contempt. Something with the union boss. Punch yourself in the head. Officer, the lieutenant watches you beat yourself in the head again. Second time in this interview. Quickly, quickly realises what is happening. Mr. Dross, about this deal you made, he turns to him with Edgar. 
The death of Krenel Mercenary was only coincidentally beneficial to the Clares, but he leans closer. What about the other people you've killed for them? Other people? Like the previous form woman of the Union. That's it. That's what you weren't connecting yourself. He wags a finger at them. They didn't fight 40 years to end up as an informant for the international regime. What happened happened. Still dumb, your eyes transfixed on his digit. It's yellow with nicotine. Before, when you asked him about the Union, he said it was a disappointment. He promised him something political. They promised political change and they didn't deliver. Look who's up, he scoffs. You're worse off than me. We'll have plenty of time to talk about this, Mr. Dross. He does not let him gloat. When you're in pre-detention, it takes years. Pre-detention. Go ahead, the straggler closes. His gap tooth smiles. I've been in solitary confinement my whole life. He's off it. This was not an unmitigated disaster. Lieutenant mitigated it. Just proceed calmly. By cock parading in his colourful uniform, you mean Rene. Every fucking morning. 34 years. He grinds his teeth in rage. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I've always loathed that game. It is not a working class game. And I don't care what they say on the radio, June. Rene. Royalist ghouls play it like it was life itself. Click clack. Makes the sound of balls connecting. Across the water each day. That uniform. Like a parrot's plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patunk maniac race traitor. Which is not. I remember him. He points to his black eye. I remember him from Lanose. Not him personally. His make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the liberals came to their rescue. We missed one. His shaky finger he points to the city. Towards the crater. Near the plaza where the lonely pine tree stands. That one. Fat and plump. Like a pheasant, just begging to be popped off. A grin stretches across his face and he whispers, Please, Mr. Dross, shoot me. He whispers, such a predatory hunger, it borders on longing. You'd like to kill him? The smile lingers, not yet. I'd like to look at him, strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, just fiddle the, fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bomb bomb melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later, the lieutenant asks cheerfully. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat for the black day. The blackest when I put the gun in my own mouth, I think. No, don't waste it. Put this lead in the cock, Rene. The boys he killed. And then I look at him, throw those balls, and I suddenly feel... He lets out a wistful sigh. Better. I even hit one bullet. I'd always have one for him. The lines on his face straighten as he looks inland. I haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. It hurts like hell, but he sweats blood. Hearing it may destabilize him. Are you sure you've gotten everything from him? Rene is dead. He died of old age a couple of days ago. Oh, yes. The old communist looks at you, his blackberry eyes shaking in disbelief. I waited too long. I waited too long and now he's dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Dross. The lieutenant says softly. I understand you knew him for a long time. He's all dead now. He just shakes his head. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done so. There must have been a thousand black days on these islands. His health is ailing. There are a thousand chances to kill him. And I blew them all! What does it matter now? He's gone. Into dust. He's reminded of himself. The same hatred. The same. He tried to think of something else, but no, it's just hatred. Are you okay, Mr. Dross? You go on. I think I haven't seen people die. It's all the same. I've seen them all do. What? It's all I've seen them do. Fuck and die. All the other plans we had. To love, to colonise the Pale. It's all fucked. He's not okay. This is another black day. A row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together. Making him endure. An idea. Told to him by grown-ups from radio towers and leaflets. In a beautiful print where he was still a teenager. Everything is possible. We fight. And then he lost. And we all did. Glad we talked about this now. You know what? I could have. I had loads of chances to uh, level up my composure. A six-year-old man with a stomach trouble, spent his entire life on an uninhabited island. He seems surprisingly fit. That's it. Squinted him. Prone to erratic hand gestures and clearly malnourished. But that's it. You can see no more by looking at his slouched frame.
I'm worried. I'm worried that he couldn't have shot. Because of his arthritis. You know what, my composure was full, so there's nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna arrest him. Yosef Lilianovich Dros, under arrest for the murder of Ellis Cortner. What? The old man's eyes fill with sudden, unexpected terror at the words, but you said I wouldn't be taken to the... Some of erratic movements, fidgeting and mood swings, he's inhibiting. Wind picks up, the silence of the water is broken all around you, Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues like an incantation. The wayfarer writes, in suspended information provided to you to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You'll be given legal counsel within one week. You must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But, Kim, he's afraid. No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, ice submerged in growing terror. Sweating, beads are forming on his forehead. Confrontation is not required, sir. Perception hearing, legendary. Wait. Here it is again. You're north, as it's been since you came to the coast. The weeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it, what? It's not a new. So it's not the uh, mystical animal, is it? The cryptozoologist. Something completely different. Sounds like a bow. Very slowly drawing against the string of a violin. A very small violin made of reeds and rushes. And then it's gone. Drowned out by the lieutenant's voice. Maybe there's room for free on the boat. On the boat. Shush, Kim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this... The old man's voice drowns in a sudden gust of wind. Really us? Or skin crawls. <gasps> it's the creature. <gasps> it's the phasmid. <laughs> A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to j then just stand there, moving its scythe. What is that? Point to it. The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. What are you talking about? A giant stick insect. It looks confused. There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you, with its tiny pinprick eyes and grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you. Your gun hand rise instinctively. There is! I see it! Tell me what you see, dammit. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words. Thank <laughs> God, if he can see, then you're not insane. But that means... It's really there. Spinning slowly, in absolute silence. Its limbs long and slender. Be very... Very careful, the lieutenant whispers. Take a step towards the giant anthropod. <laughs> I can't believe it's real, it's amazing! Same with my game! The little details in this game are amazing! The creature stands on long, stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled from the tips. It's no more than five steps away from you. Weeds like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. There's something else in a lower register. Let 
to a chemistry medium. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps towards the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around the head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. The, the tr tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you. you take in and expel her air smelling from you. Hissing and clicking extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you right below it now. Looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs, the head of the creature, it's crowned by reeds, and its eyes are small droplets of water. Okay, Kim, take the picture. Okay. The slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open, raises it to eye level. There's no change in the insect motion while it's being aimed at by the camera. It remains fixated on you. And three. Whispers. The voice is tense. It moves. You jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. <gasps> the shrill flash. We kept that photo as well, didn't we? The shrill flash of the camera cuts. This makes up for me not seeing the third racist comment. Uh, camera cuts air like a blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes its bright lights. Head turned towards Lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. The sweat on your arm feels cold as ice. It's as if you're frozen as well. The shadow of this giant statue of chitinous marble. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops into a photo paper in his hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds in the sky. You, as a shadow before it. Immortalized. I think we should back off. We got the picture. A shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like our record continuing where it left off. In swaying, praying motion, even the small black poles of its eyes do not stray from you. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. Total ancient silence comes from its mouth. Along with what appears to be some kind of foam, the stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Down on your tiptoes to look more closely. You are right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, and the segmented lower lips looks to be foaming slowly. The foam is white and yellowish. Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. Lieutenant watches you apprehensively. It's smelling me. Inland Empire, medium, spoke to the hanger to man, did not give up on the phasmid. Those of Parthenogenesis. <gasps> I exist. We may have gone insane. Exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. If I tell you what will happen, then I will tell you what it's like for me. It's like fire burning. Fire where? On the horizon, pale fire, this thing we're both sensing, coming to an end. It is your problem. Nothing ends for me. There's only room for two. Every three pictures in my mind. For me, it is a series of half lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Where does the next picture? What if the next picture doesn't come? This creature is not a photographer, it's the camera. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals, internal sensations, swarm of sounds. Tiny vibrations on the insides of my forearms, all speak, speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I'm at the end of a narrow tunnel, weightless, 
so light it only feels like something to, to be me truth perhaps I'm nothing I certainly do not have a soul if I did it would never burn I'm glad to be me I'm an incredibly sensi sensitive instrument few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you all creation reflected in your forebrain it must be like the highest of hells a kaleidoscope of fire and riving glass eternal damnation even when you're sleeping and when you wake carry it around on your neck eyes open cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror I feel great mute empathy for you it was disorienting at first but I'm keeping my shit together that must be incredibly hard the arthropods are silent and meaning this awe of you knowing that we are watching when you're tired when the vision spins out of control the insects will be looking on rooting for you and when you fall we will come to raise you up bud from you banner like blossom from you and carry you a part in a sky funeral in honor of your passing but not me because i'm just a leaf eater detective I'm a detective. Am I? I was born to detect sucrose rewards and simio chemicals. What were you two born to detect? I was a killer. He was in a bad state. Deter deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. But destroying him. Very slowly, only because he won't go away meant to keep him from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads, but he has looked at me for too long. I'm destroying him. Ah, oh, I think he means it literally, like he, he removes himself from people's memories. Is this a dream? What is happening? No, you are awake. I'm real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this, all around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lilies. Then all we can do is beat our fists against it. Day after day, with no answer. You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or a reed. Right, so... You look like a reed and you eat reeds. Yes, they don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. What exactly are you? I'm an unknown species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Intilidean Isola. For the last time, for the last 350 years, I've hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, vaulting, cloning myself, and folding at night to play with the trash bins and the buoys. I may have unknown d dangerous biochemical characteristics to help my maintain its camouflage. That was what I was thinking. Genuinely, I might be just hallucinating. Uh, I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the suzerain, also by the soldiers of the revolution, the officials of, of the occupation, even the Seminine islanders who came here first, but did not stay, not seen me. I've stayed hidden for four forms of government, two scientific revolutions, until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the citizens' militia in Revachol district, Martinez, March 51. Are you poisonous? Yes, I do not have a startle display. I use neurodegenerative alimony to aid in camouflage. Do not worry, it's only destructive over long periods of time. To the deserter, he's been here for a long time. Are you the miracle? No. You are the miracle. <laughs> I really like this game. It was you, coming from the west, from the whirling. You were coming. How? The moral of our encounter is I'm a relatively median life form, while you are an extreme, all engulfing madness, volatile simian nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Cenarians do not. Uh, the Canid Canidarians do not. The radically symmetric the radi radically symmetrics do not. It's almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you're going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human made. It's a nervous shadow, cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. Great unnatural territory. The advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I might be going crazy right now. I don't have that kind of power. 
You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos stars burning in it are afraid of you. Given enough time, you'd wipe us all out and place us with nothing, just by accident. Now, oh. you suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out Anna Arabic life 2.6 billion years ago, when organisms first started breathing, but do much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees. Deep thoughts. Worse how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still there? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us one day? Or just forget. But I don't want to blink and undo 12 million years of matter expansion. Simeon Butcherer, soon one of you will close your eyes and open them to see none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like I know. What does it look like? You're just staring at it, he whispers. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. After a second, the lieutenant asks, is it somehow related to the case? Sort of. I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. I've already forgotten the whole world once when I drank too much. So it is already happening. Soon one of you will close your eyes. Okay. No, there is one more. Oh, ah, this is new! I, I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. All the creatures I've met here are the most beautiful. Thank you. I also have one more th thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. <laughs> He's dead. Yeah, this is definitely gone mad. I will. It was middle class. It doesn't take a three metre stick insect to tell you that. Look behind you. It's smelling me. Maybe it is real. The pheromone. The lieutenant's mouth is agape. The insect's head is crowned with reed like scales. Okay, so the conversation never happened. But the stick insect is real. The shape of its seed head. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles as its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. It's breathing you in. Your sour, greasy, semio chemicals on the breeze. Raise your hand slowly. I think that's a terrible idea. The insect stops its stridation, seeming to observe you. Below the crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly there is silence. No stop. Be afraid. Raise your other hand too. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you. Praying to you. Isn't it about to kill me? Don't pray to me, I'm nothing. The reed creature does not stop its stridations. It towers above you, pairing the reeds as emerged from Parting the reeds it emerged from, tough like structures still rustle on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god? Disengage slowly, leave. As you, you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water. Long limbs carry its featherweight without breaking its surface. I don't think it actually could eat me, could it? It eats reeds. Just like that's gone. Skating away across the sea, sees calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, its places stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Lieutenant looks north, his hand raised to his brow. 
What's that in, in the reeds? Squints. It's like a nest of some sort. We should take a look. Can it walk on water? Uh, apparently, yes. Like a water strider only. He shakes his head with amazement. I've never seen anything like that in my life. What now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. Puts his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. Some kind of strange catatonic strait. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Wait, hang on. Why is Clashy's passport, passport there? Okay, we're gonna save again. I still suspect when it. Okay. I'm gonna let you go because it's 45 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'm really happy with the fast bit. Uh, I, yes, I've been John Foxy. I've been having a Disco Elysium adventure. Thank you for watching.